Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video, I will tell you why I use Google Photos as my main photo system. So a couple of years ago, I did a four part series on how I organized and managed my digital photos using a combination of Google's Picasa and Google Photos. So I've since abandoned that system, mostly because my computer crashed and it lost all of my hard storage data. But since I already had all of my photos stored in Google Photos Cloud, I just started using that system full time. So I've done some videos since then on how to free up space on your phone and how I use Google Photos, but I thought that I would restate my reasons for why I use Google Photos in the, in the first place. The first reason is to free up space on my phone. I don't want every photo that I have ever taken stored on my phone. I don't have a limit unlimited storage and I do not want to have to choose between deleting old photos or taking new ones. Google Photos allows you to sync your photos to the cloud and then delete them off your phone. You can see my video on this if you want a step-by-step -step guide. At any given time, I have only like three to 30 photos on my phone. However, I can always access them from the cloud as long as I have internet access. They don't take up space and, and I can pull them down whenever I want. In addition, I like to be able to access my photos anywhere. So when my photos were only on my phone, that was the only place that I could access them. Now with Google Photos, I can get to them from my computer, from my iPad, from Google Chromecast, and really any other device that is internet connected. My photos are wherever I need them to be. So let me just quickly run through some Google Photos basics. So Google Photos stores all of your photos indiscriminately in a big vat. Then you can use albums to organize them. So you can look at the big vat containing every picture by clicking on photos, which also happens to be the default view, or you can view by folders or albums by choosing album view. Photo view does not give you any options for sorting. It sorts by date only, most recent on top, and it uses the date embedded in the photo file metadata. Fortunately, you can change photo dates within Google Photo, which I will cover later on. So if you go into an individual photo, we are uh, in the iOS app here, you can hit the edit button to do some light editing. So you can apply limited filters, crop, some basic lighting adjustments and rotation, but that editing function is fairly limited. In addition, you can hit the dot 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 button up here or pull up to get access to the photos files metadata. So here you can change the date on the file, you can add a caption or add the photo to an album. You can hit the Google Lens button to see things on the internet that might be related. I'll come back to this in a minute. And hit the share button to save to your device, send to someone, print it, or open it in another app. So these are the basics. Now let me just tell you about my very favorite thing about Google Photos, facial recognition. So this is not quite as good as Picasso's, nor is it as flexible, but it is pretty awesome. Basically, if you turn on group similar faces in settings, Google Photos will group together pictures of people who it thinks are the same person. It will also do this for pets if you specify. And it does a scarily remarkable job of determining who is the same person, even from age four to age 24. Then, if you name those groups, which you can do through the search screen, just click on the people, click a group, and select add a name. Um, you can search by a person's name. Searching by name is fantastic for locating photos in what would otherwise be a needle in a haystack situation. So I'm sure you have witnessed people scrolling through endless photos while they try to pull up something to show you. It's excruciating. As I said, it's not super flexible. You can only identify people that Google Photos has automatically grouped, but it is still amazing and is one of my very favorite features. In addition to this, you can also search by other stuff. So I haven't even figured out all the ways to search, but some of my favorites are searching by date, like all of the photos taken on March 10th, or just photos that are taken in March. You can search by location, uh, Paris, Mexico, New York City, or even by um, occasion, Halloween, Christmas, Mardi Gras, or objects, beach, or letter. For these last couple, Google Photos is incorporating quite a bit of artificial intelligence for object recognition. So you can try to search anything that comes to mind. So for example, if I search for lizard, here is what I get. Or what about beach or vase? 
So obviously there are misses and over inclusions, but wow, this is so helpful in searching for the right photo. I love this feature and it's only getting better. As an aside, I am obsessed with the confusion that AI has in working out some differences. Hats off to at Teeny Biscuit, who shares all of these on Twitter. So is this a chihuahua or a muffin? A puppy or a bagel? Or my favorite, a golden doodle or fried chicken? Google Lens, so I don't use this feature a ton, but Google Photos allows you to use its Google Lens technology to search the internet for other related objects or places. So this comes in handy when you're looking for a product or trying to identify a location. Obviously you're feeding all of your photos into Google's giant Big Brother database, so there is a trade-off in terms of lack of privacy. You are gonna have to decide whether the convenience of Google Photos is worth it to you. So I always also use Google Photos to easily share photos and albums. So you can share photos right from the app without downloading them to your phone. So if you want to send a text with a photo, just go into the photo, select that sharing button, and decide whether to share within Google Photos, which is an option if you are sending to someone who is also using that app, or click on Share To for more options. If you decide to text or email, it embeds the photo right into your text. So how about if you want to email several pictures? In the iOS app, you just need to press hard to select, so then select the photos and hit the sharing button to include all of those in your message. If you want to share a bunch of photos, that is also easy. Create an album of those photos by selecting all the photos that you want, choosing the sharing button, hit share to, and choose shared album. At this point, you can choose a previously created album or you can create a brand new one. Then you can share that, uh, by hitting the button and choosing contacts from your list or typing in some new email addresses. This will send them a link to your albums so that you don't flood their inbox with 50 megabytes worth of photos. You can also set it up to allow others to add their own photos to your album so that it is more collaborative. How I use my photos. So finally, I have a whole video on how I use my photos. So you can watch that if you want more details on this. But since all of my photos are available in the cloud, I can enjoy them in lots of ways, including sending photos by email once a month to a small family circle, sending a collage to a larger group once a quarter, making albums for events or occasions, creating slideshows for special groups or people, and using our TVs as giant digital photo frames to display a random assortment of photos for my whole family to enjoy. So that is it. I like Google Photos for saving space on my phone, being able to access my photos from anywhere, being able to search by person, date, location, event, uh, caption, or other objects, and its ability to share and use those photos easily. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.